Hey guys, and welcome to the Lunge and Lift podcast. Today's episode is all about training for health, performance, and aesthetics, and basically what the differences is between them all. So I want to hand it over to you straight away, mate. I think you're going to be, I think this is definitely your jam. You've, in episode two, when we spoke about what is your function and the continuum, that's where, you know, you really started to hammer into me, like, like really get me to understand, like, the, basically the three directions. So, uh, yeah, let's get chatting. Sure. So I think this is a builds on what we were discussing last episode about understanding why you're training in the first place. If you understand what the purpose behind your training is, we need then need to address how you go about getting it. And the reason I wanted to have this chat is basically quite often people will conflate health performance and aesthetics and they think they're all the same. So if somebody looks great that means they're probably an amazing athlete and it means they're probably very healthy. And equally, if somebody's eating a salad, then they're probably like a a good athlete or, you know what I mean? Like people think that they're one and the same and actually they can be very distinct, especially towards the extremes. Like the, an Olympian probably isn't, hasn't got the longest lifespan compared to somebody who's super healthy, but they probably aren't the best athlete. And aesthetics, obviously there's, some subjectivity there everyone has their own personal ideal of what they think looks amazing but if we take bodybuilders as the uh the epitome of aesthetics because that's what the whole sport is about it's just looking a certain way they probably aren't the healthiest or the best athletes uh, so there are trade-offs to be made and what i want to discuss in this episode are what are those trade-offs and how do we Uh, adapt our training to prioritize whatever we've chosen out of these three areas and it just means that whenever you're approaching your training you can have a little bit more uh, mindfulness as to which decisions you make and hopefully that will mean you get the results you want uh, more directly rather than in a roundabout way. As I guess, like you said, it all links back to like that last episode where we spoke about your why. So when we said about you have your health, you have your performance and you have your aesthetics. So you're understanding the direction that you need to travel in. But now you have the direction you now need to now um, get a bit more definitive with that option. So if we if we start with performance, I think performance is a really, I think, uh, a good one because especially being within say where we work within CrossFit and or we obviously work do a bunch of other stuff but say we work at WIT and having CrossFit as a um, training methodology that's quite performance based that's pretty much mm-hmm. what it's all about yet it still also pushes health yeah. now I think and this is what I found really interesting is where when CrossFit started its goal was to basically make you a healthier version. And they spoke about obviously ways that you can eat to obviously make you healthier, which we won't touch on just here. But when we're talking about the training, it started out moving, doing your one workout of the day and going forth. And then obviously people started to, you know, do a couple of them. And then obviously then the CrossFit games come about. And then this is where I think the the lines got blurred, which is where all of the current like uh, say why CrossFit changed because I think Glassman said you know what we've gone too far away from what the goal was and I think yeah. they've just strayed off into a new direction and the performance side of things because CrossFit has looked great most of the time they're unreal athletes and you know so the, their performance they, they eat well so everyone thinks they're like the epitome of all three mm. but I think they, they're obviously they're a performance athlete, but are they all three categories? Would you class a CrossFit as all three categories? I mean, compared to the average person, probably they're healthier, perform better, and have better rigs. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are like, but, and I think that that is something that's worth clarifying. There is a lot of overlap. There is yeah. like if you train at all, you're going to be healthier than if you don't train. And you're going to perform better than if you don't train. And uh, you're probably going to look better than if you don't train as well. It's just once you get closer to the extremes of like, okay, if you're training multiple hours a week, which direction are you biasing more towards? Because there is always overlap. But at what point do you start sacrificing one for the other? So if you're training, you know, 20 hours a week instead of three to five hours a week, is like where's the tipping point between yeah. um, you're now actually ha- 
having some detrimental effects on your health in exchange for performance benefits and have you consciously made that decision and you see it like some people like even at gym box some people i've seen do like back-to-back hit classes for three hours and why like the question is why are you doing that if it's for enjoyment and that's just how you like to spend a tuesday evening fine like but be aware that it probably isn't optimizing your health it probably isn't optimizing your performance or like all three of them are probably taking a hit but yeah. why are you doing it in the first place and if you're a bit clear about why you're doing it then maybe you go about things slightly differently um but yeah let's, let's start with performance obviously it depends on what sport or what metric you're using to measure your performance and your training should very much center around optimizing for that so something like powerlifting is pretty straightforward it's all about how many kilos can you lift in squat bench deadlifts on the day the one rep maxes so your training exercise selection should stay pretty close to your competition style lifts because those are the skills that you will be evaluated on you shouldn't be doing huge amounts of random stuff that doesn't carry over to those lifts should be pretty heavy most of the time shouldn't be doing huge high volume sets really like there's not much uh, benefit to it and yeah that's i guess um very it's, it's just about how much you lift there's not as much emphasis on um time and tension on uh well so there'd be like different variations so if we contrast that let's take an example for an exercise so if we're deadlifting for powerlifting we want low rep sets we want heavy and it's all about how much can you eventually lift if we're using a deadlift for somebody who has a health goal so they're not being evaluated on how much they deadlift obviously it'd be nice for them to get gradually stronger over time but in terms of their function what do they need to deadlift? They need to pick up a heavy suitcase. They need to pick up their kids. They need to be able to move furniture. So if we were training with those goals in mind, how would we deadlift differently? We might deadlift awkward objects, might use feebles or sandbags or you know, kettlebells, dead, uh, dumbbells, and lift in different planes of motion. So practice picking up your kid from outside your left foot or practice like an awkward, uh, awkwardly loaded suitcase where all the weights in one side all those sorts of things actually carry over more for your day-to-day tasks and that's your why um if we then take deadlifts and think about how we would apply it for aesthetics like how does a bodybuilder deadlift differently to a power lifter first of all there's no movement standards in bodybuilding so if you haven't got the range to pull from the floor there's no problem you can as long as you're overloading the muscles and achieving a hypertrophy stimulus there that's all that really matters so we want to grow a muscle the main levers to pull are volume time under tension mechanical tension and metabolic stress so if we want to achieve those with a deadlift how do we go go about it we could be using more romanian deadlifts um, longer, higher rep sets, uh, slow tempo, so that it basically makes it feel difficult and the muscle feels overloaded, which is its stimulus to grow, which again is very contrasting to a power lifter. We're actually doing the slow reps. You're training yourself to be slow. Yeah. Whereas to max out, you want to be fast, like you want to fire up those yeah. fast switch bars. Rip it off the floor, yeah. With exactly. control, obviously, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I find I find that really interesting because it's like it just shows with that say one movement that can be formed in three different ways with three different um like um directions of training because it's like when performance obviously is the spef uh, this this word again <laughs> <laughs> specificity. <laughs> so basically <laughs> I, I can't do it. It's the one I uh, anyway. So basically yeah, we'll get there. But deadlifting for the sport of powerlifting means you will do that lift because that's and they might you go obviously do your variations to say work that lift, but your main goal is that's your performance. Whereas then if you're looking for health, you're looking at your day to day. 
you know, what, what, as you said, like picking up your kids and all this stuff is, what do you do in a day-to-day life? And then with the aesthetics, it's making sure you're getting as much tension through the, the targeted muscles as possible. So it, it's funny because you get so many people, this is how you deadlift. But it's like, yes, this is, say, maybe how you deadlift, but for what reason? And that's, that's where I think it's, it's, it's very easy to get carried away following, say, a certain individual and, say, their methodology on how they lift they might be thinking more generalized and just trying to make sure you do a say a a performance-based say deadlift compared to actually what is why are you coming to me either for PT or a class or whatever and is it now specific to your individual case because I think if you've got to say uh, a new mum that's you know started training again should she really be deadlifting like say a powerlifter this is uh, who knows so that's my thing but isn't that's it's like but with that you just think cool okay maybe she can do it like a powerlifter but maybe she can't create that much intra-abdominal pressure just after giving birth so then she has to start thinking maybe that's not the right thing for her to do right now but you can still do variations that will still help her in that hinging pattern and i guess that that's the main thing is we call it a deadlift but it's still making sure it's more of a hinge so cool how is that hinge going to work for performance aesthetics and health yeah yeah spot on and um yeah like we say it always comes back to the why and what's your function um but yeah i think at different points in your life there's different focuses so you're quite a good example is that you've done your bodybuilding where it was very much aesthetics focus like that is the sport and you're working towards powerlifting and well you did a lot of crossfit as well which is very uh, performance focused and now you're sort of entering more of a health phase how have you found like <laughs> it's just in terms of what your uh, what your life and training like what are the key differences you would say in terms of when you've been when you're doing bodybuilding what was your training like when you were yeah. doing powerlifting how did it change um I, when i was so yes yeah, quite good actually because it's the evolution um from bodybuilding it was definitely you know a lot of the i had my main strength set was a five by five that was like what i was just to kind of keep some tension even though i had dabbled in some powerlifting at the time it was that mm-hmm. was the, that was just the tension and then after that it was a lot more you know as you say your hypertrophy sets you know you're getting your volume in using cables using free weights using machines getting a pump doing that to really work on that but it become it was such a um solo thing that is so it's so self-absorbed which if you can or obviously if that's your goal that's completely fine but how you need to be you need to be completely self-absorbed to get to the levels of body fat that you need to be if you're going to compete that is if you're just doing it to look good and then that's a that's different that's you don't need to be as self-absorbed um but you still need to obviously train in a certain way. So, you know, as you said, like using the using time under tension, using just essentially um, increasing volume and general progressive overload in just general training. When it got to powerlifting um, and say, and CrossFit, both of it was say the performance side of thing. And with that, it was the constant thing of trying to improve. And like, cool, if I can't do a bar muscle up, what is it or ring muscle up? What is it? That's my weakness. Why do I need, and then start to, get my specific movements that are going to help me with that and still do the, so using the ring muscle base example. So making sure I was working my transitions, working sure I was working my kip swings, but then also still doing ring muscle ups per se to make sure I'm still greasing that groove. Yeah. So that when it comes to the performance side of things, that was, I was always making sure that I was progressing. That was my, my goal and my yeah. why, because I had that. And as you said, now kind of gearing my life a little bit more towards health. And it's funny because, this is where I do feel a little bit lost at the moment because this is a this is an area that I've not really I'm massively interested in, but because you know I hold brain optimization, health optimization, all that stuff, I'm I'm fascinated by it, and I think it's shown why over the years when I've done so many different like different things because it's I like the challenge, but where I've now kind of entered this different whether it's because i've had chloe and i now i view life a little bit different like my aesthetics if i'm a little bit chubbier than someone else i don't care is uh, i'm now i've but at the same time i do still care for my own like 
how I look because I do still care because yeah. I, I I had uh, filmed myself doing something the other day and I I, I didn't want to put it up on Instagram because I was like oh god I look chubby as hell there. <laughs> and but this is the thing so I still have that I still have that mindset of you know uh, how I look and it because it is important at the end of the day health means you do need to look decent as well most of the time within within reason because mm. if you if you have a lower body fat you're going to be a lot more optimized basically your body's going to function better you're going to have less um inflammatory uh, in your body you're going to have less inflammation about your body you're going to just in general be in a better position especially what to fight off illnesses like at this moment time with corona so it's like it's like a perfect opportunity be, being a bit leaner to be healthier yeah. as long as long as you it's not just i'm gaming it and becoming lean and saying oh, i'm now healthy you're like no no you've just got lean so and as I, I mentioned in a previous podcast i'm trying to change who i am and because this is such an unknown area for me, I'm really struggling to pin down a direction that I'm currently working mm. towards. So this is this is new. So that's where like my training as well has taken a little bit of a like I'm been doing a lot of dumbbell stuff to work on some of my weaknesses because I know I've been a bit off recently, uh, be getting not injured but kind of get a little bit aches and pains here and there. So I'm just uh, so that's kind of like my in the back of my head my thoughts. So. That's what I've kind of lacked that where I had a performance goal, I've had an aesthetic goal. I now haven't necessarily got this health goal yet. So this is something that I'm trying to work on at the moment as it is. So a lot harder to quantify. I think that's the thing about health. Like, yeah. I think the only sort of objective data you can have is a blood panel and just seeing where your markers are and well, assessing them over time. Well, we we touched on that. So I so I've I've done used a company called Thriver um to do my blood tests and i've been do i've done so when i've done a month of vegan i done one uh before and after and looked at what my bloods were after that um i done one at the end of january after i had like a month of no carbs no sugar no booze and no uh caffeine um and i've just done one the other day and it was really interesting because every all my blood markers are in a good place mm. except for my thyroid still needs a little bit which has always been something that i've been working on anyway and um i can't remember the other one but it was it was it was only two real things that needed a little bit of addressing which i already knew anyway which is good for someone that say hasn't been massively health focused over the past couple of weeks you know boozing and eating everything so i've not exactly been optimal but i've still managed to that that's obviously where my homeostasis is so i need to that's my you know that's my say goal of say you know i, I at least i've got my data that i can work towards yeah. so but yeah, yeah, you're definitely right. When it comes to health and stuff, it's uh, using things like your whoop and stuff. That's all well and good, but again, that's uh, that's still a bit sketchy at times because that is are you. So for me, the fact it says today I'm 48 percent, does that mean I am actually 48 percent? No, it doesn't mean make, doesn't make me who I am. I'm not a 48 percent individual. But what it does mean is I'm less recovered than I was yesterday, and that's the interesting thing. So that's then where my my data points of understanding of cool what's working and what's not is based on say how i'm feeling and that's such a loose term isn't it oh how do you feel today oh i feel a little bit soft you know you know <laughs> just, it, i just it, it's a little less right well, i i weigh x or i have list, yeah. uh, lifted y so it's very it's very airy fairy so it's a little bit harder to work towards so this way i think you know where you said at the start where it crosses over between there is some crossover periods I think this is where I think I need to find my crossover bit of what's a bit of a performance goal to work towards and a aesthetic goal to work towards while still focusing on health as my priority. So say if I had percentages of each, I'd say maybe say 60% health or say 50% health, 20, uh, 20, let's give 30% to uh, uh, performance and 20% to the way I look. So it just, it means I've got my, you can't have 100% of everything. So yeah. Uh, them as all glasses of water right you can't have them all filled up you only got say say a liter bottle of water you got to pour into glasses so you got to think how much water am i going to pour into each one and that's the thing is if you've only got the liter you can't get suddenly get three out of nowhere so this is where i think i'm going quite in at the moment with this health stuff mm. i still i'm not i shouldn't be 100 percent. i shouldn't be emptying this bottle into this one glass i still need those other ones to give me direction yeah for sure and i think that's also a really valid point for the listeners is you can want goals in all three areas, but having an appreciation for the relative importance of them 
to you will help inform how you allocate your time and energy. So say, you, like you, you're 50% health, 30% performance, 20% aesthetics. Are you allocating your time and effort and maybe budget in that way? So are you like, how are you spending yeah, your time and your money um, on like whether it's training equipment, whether it's food, all those sorts of things. If you know what your priorities are, you can make sure that your actions align with your priorities. Whereas if you're not sure of them, it's a lot easier to get swept up in what other people are doing and what they're prioritizing. And you get this sense of that's what you should want rather than what you actually do want. And yeah. I think like starting CrossFit is a really uh, important stage in somebody's training career because they're in enter a gym and they'll see people who are in amazing shape they'll see people doing amazing things performance wise and then they'll see people eating and uh drinking smoothies like living a really healthy life and it can be quite overwhelming because it might be a huge system shock compared to what they were doing before but if they know they're doing it because they just want to be a bit healthier then not slapping another 10 kilos on their deadlift attempt, they can make peace with that decision. They're like, okay, I can actually just, that's not why I'm here. I know these guys want to go to sanctionals. So for them, the performance element is their 80%, let's say. Whereas for me, I'm not going to get evaluated on my deadlift. So I'm just doing it to be healthier. So I'm not going to put my back at risk. I'm just going to chill out a little bit. Equally, if you're aware that aesthetics, you're, you're doing it because you want to look a little bit better, then spending a bit more time on the nutrition um, and a bit more effort and a bit more of your yeah, time, energy, and money on eating better might be a better allocation versus just mind, mindless uh, training. And well, yeah, you can go into a, a lot of levels of detail here, but. I think just that key consideration of why am I doing this in the first place? Okay, let's not get wrapped up in what somebody else wants or somebody else thinks I should want. Just staying focused. And I guess I guess it's always a thing where you know if you're if you're thinking about what the, um, direction your training is going in. So if you're going a bit more say performance esque or a bit more aesthetics or whatever, it's then maybe also talking to then the right individual to help you to get there. Because it's very easy, especially so say for someone like myself who I've this is say a new area for me to kind of start delving my own training into. And because it's a bit unknown, it's it's that this is an opportunity for me to maybe talk to a coach to say, OK, cool. That might, might be a bit more towards, say, well-being or something like that. And, mm. but, or, and you know, so and just to learn. And because I think a big thing when you say about people coming into the gym, it's so easy to get then, you know, carried up into what everyone else is doing, especially because you think, OK, I'm going to the gym because I want to be healthy. And then then you get carried away with the class, the structure. OK, today's build to a heavy three and you're building to everything. You see everyone else hitting something, you know, you, you, you can get tempted into it. And that's yeah. the thing. And, and that's not necessarily a problem. But, you know, as you know, it's that's a good thing sometimes. But it's understanding that that was say a one off and that but that also is a good part especially if you're there just to kind of for well-being wise because it's also a little test of testing of yourself and saying cool how how am i have i got a little bit of grit and have i got a little bit of extra like little thing there to kind of push a little bit more so i think it's the now we know like what we what we want with direction is that is making sure we know how how do we get it i think that's such a the how do we get it is so important and that's where talking to coaches or talking or even just writing down yourself and understanding and then thinking about what it exactly is what you're working towards and then doing a little um spider diagram off that how am i going to get this so say you know if it's just say a, a increase your deadlift or whatever it is so yeah, yeah but on i think I'm trying to think of some other key takeaways like um well let's, let's uh let's go back to training principles stuff like failure in bodybuilding in bodybuilding because the goal is overloading a muscle and creating a stimulus for it to grow getting to failure is a frequent and important occurrence however if we're looking at it from a sport performance point of view 
when you start failing reps, you then start to ingrain bad motor patterns. So yeah. you wouldn't keep snatching until you failed because your form would get more well, you, you say you wouldn't. I think we've both <laughs> seen people kind well, of doing yeah. that. Well, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it? Like, there's a reason why people say no bad reps or like with sprinters, as soon as they start to slow down on their repeats, coaches will just end the session like, right, that's it. You've lost your, your intensity for today. There's no point in us practicing you running slowly. So that's as much quality work as we can get out today. And that is a massive distinction because it's the, the it's such so many shades of gray between um, training for aesthetics versus performance. If you've come from a bodybuilding background and you now you come to CrossFit and you're practicing a new skill, when you were doing your bicep curls, you would do them until you literally couldn't do another one. Yeah. But now you're trying to learn a kipping pull-up and you, if you take the same approach, you're then going to start give, like practicing bad reps, bad technique will actually hold you back in the long term. Do you know what? I, I think that exactly that point and it's uh, going on that is if you using say the pull-ups or say a snatch, which we kind of touched on there is in like, if the object of the day's training is to do Isabel, all right, 30 snatches for time, all right, cool. You might go to failure at some point. This is a test. This is, this is a benchmark workout. You do you, you get them done. If your programming calls for four sets of three at whatever or something like that, this is then where you don't want to be going to failure. And this is where you don't want to be just failing rest. This is where you want to make sure you're floating and, you know, getting towards that point, but not hitting that point. This is where you're trying to push intensity, not have intensity, because as soon as you add that level of intensity, like doing 30 reps of time, that's then when it all goes to pop. And I think this is where people treat then say their program and say like four by three, like Isabel, like they need to make sure they, I've got to do these three reps. So I it's like, no, no, this is, even if you then have to rest it down for a moment and it's not necessarily touch and go whatever, and you have to think about a little reset bit and you're getting that quality of movement. It's so key. And I, I think, that's where the Isabel is your performance. And then it like, even though say your four by three is performance, it's also then say your aesthetics where you're thinking about, cool, I need to move this bar pretty. Cause you, yeah. even like you're trying to make your body look pretty, you say, you're then also gonna wanna make this bar. So aesthetics of a movement is key mm -hmm. as well. So it's not just that. So you need to also think about what side you're thinking about. And if you're in, if you're then in the health side of things, this is then cool. Okay, I will want to make myself leave here feeling better than I come in. So yeah, simple as that, isn't it? Like um, meaningful practice. Like why are you doing it? You're doing it to practice a skill rather than just end yourself. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, it's send it, isn't it? It's send it. You got to send it. So yeah, send it. <laughs> Good mate. I think that's it. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, just I think I guess the bit when we're talking about consider consider what your goal is as uh, I think the the main conclusion and make sure you how can you tweak your training to optimize for it. I think making sure you again write down your goal, have that direction, understand what you're doing, and like when we say with myself and my glasses, my three glasses, how much mm -hmm. am I putting into each one and making sure I'm I'm filling them up perfectly because I can't have all three at hundred percent. So I need to remember that because usually my, even though I'm say focusing a little bit more at the moment on say a bit more say health side of things, I do have a blend of all three. I do still like to look a bit better. I do still want to perform. So that is, that is the, that is very, that is key, but I just need to remember my priority, I guess, and make sure my training is reflecting what I want to get out. And I think, I think I need to do this task myself get my glasses and my imaginary glasses work out how much percent of each one and then come up with a training and train come up with a training that supports that give myself a direction and a goal to achieve so i'm not just you know running on the spot give me a little bit of a direction so then when i do achieve it i can then think of well, cool what is my next objective so i think that's a that's a task that i think for any of our listeners that if you are feeling a little bit lost i think get that done I think that'll really help you. I'm going to be doing it myself to make sure it helps me give a bit of direction. But I think as you already have that with your 5K, you have you have your one arm pull ups. This is good. I love it. But you're uh, you're an inspiration, mate. <laughs>
so uh, but yeah i think i think that's i think that's finished off today's episode nicely and um as always guys you know if you've been listening to us on itunes please give us a five star review and if you have enjoyed it please share the episodes help us grow um we're hopefully going to do a less awkward week on week and a little bit better and um we are also on youtube and spotify and uh anything you want to add there mate no just keep these suggestions coming in we've had quite a few people uh request topics to be covered we want this to be as valuable for you as possible so um whether it's yeah instagram or on itunes let us know the uh things you want us to talk about and we'll be happy to oblige amazing right guys we'll catch you in the next episode cheers guys Thank you.